All right. We have sound now. Mike, thank you. I just went ahead and turned the audio on. Let me let me start over. All right, I'll start over. <laughs> so we're apparently live. Uh, got the audio worked out. Uh, yeah, you, when it, you got to turn the power button on. It's crazy. You would think it would just like with technology nowadays, it would just come on automatically when I wanted to talk. Um, anyway, we're going to do a lidded box today. I'm going to do it out of Myrtlewood. If you have any questions, just leave them in the in the chat there and I'd be more than happy to answer them, whether it's about the, the project we're working on or if it's something else, anything wood turning related. All right. Thank you, Mike. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and switch cameras here. We'll get it uh, mounted up in the lathe and get going. All right. I hope everybody's having a good weekend. All right. Let's do this. All right. I have a piece of myrtle wood here. It's, uh, I'm going to say, about, about six inches long and about three, three and a half by or so. Right, around, right in there. Went ahead and marked center on both ends. Go ahead, go ahead and mount it in there, and then we will get it trued up and tenon put down on each end of it. There we go. All right. So raise up the tailstock or the tool rest a little bit and I'm going to use a spindle gouge to get it trued up and we're going to put a tenon on each end of it so that we can make one half one part of it the, the base of the box or the and or the body of it and then the other part the lid all right get my face shield on here and the lathe speed is uh, about 2500 rpm all right All right, and get the corners knocked off. There we go. Bring the tool rest up. It's pretty close to true. A couple little flat spots on it, but nothing to worry about. All right. And then we'll put a tenon down on each end of it so we can, once we part it off, I'm going to part it in half about right there. And that way we'll have a tenon on each end to get to put it back in the chuck. There we go. Got one on that side. And then we'll get one down here. There we go. So when you're doing a linted box, about one third is is a good rule of thumb as far as proportion for the body and the lid. So that looks like it's uh, about right there. I think that will be good. And we'll switch over to the easy wood. That way we don't take off too much material. And you can just go, go straight in with that. And so when you're when you're going in with the parting tool, just kind of you can look right down that groove. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but you can see how small the 
the little tenons getting in the inside of there. So just kind of you can see the light coming through it. Hey Zach, we're gonna do a lidded box today, and this is out of uh, Myrtle Wood. All right. So there we go. Got that cut off. Then we'll be able to put the. We'll go ahead and start with the lid, and then come back and do the do the body of it. So we're gonna put it in the chuck. All right. Do the tools get hot when I'm turning at 2,500? They probably get hot at any speed. Um, yes, they do. Yeah, they, I'm sure they still get hot at 800 RPM still. They probably get hot faster at 2,500 though. Working on a skateboard box. That's awesome. Very cool. I love, love play. Got to do a project up in Seattle using a glued up skateboard blank. That was, that's super cool. Tony, how are you doing, sir? All right, I'm gonna back this off here. I'll switch cameras here real quick so you can see. So I'm gonna do the tenon down, or the actually not the tenon. We are gonna do the recess. So I'm gonna make, this is gonna be the lid, so I'm gonna make the recess for that. Well, we have easy wood chucks at the AW. I believe so. I'm I'm not sure what they're sending us, but but uh, that would be be good to have a few of them. I'll, I'll I will check and see. All right. So I'm going to make a recess in here, and. Then we'll use that. Then we'll go, when we bring the body back up, we'll make the tenon. So I'm just using the parting tool. We'll come in here. I forgot, forgot to put my face shield on. There we go. And then that way when we do the body, we can put the lid on to fit a shape in it. All right. Hey James, how you doing? All right. So now I'm gonna use the number one hauler to get that middle of that cleaned out. Reduce some of the weight of it. There we go. I'm going to just concave that or cup it just a little teeny bit so that it sits nice and flat on there. There we go. All right, 
Now I'm going to shape shape just the, just the bottom of it, and then we'll finish the, the rest of it up when we flip it around. And that way, way we can sand it. I'm gonna turn it off here real quick to make sure it's. We don't have. Tony, do I know what it is yet? It's going. It's. It's going to be a lidded box. It's not yet, but it's going to be. Give me, give me a little bit of time. And we can finish up the rest of us after we flip it around. But what you want to do now is go ahead and sand the inside of this and that, that lip right there. And then that way you don't, don't have to come back to it. All right. made an urn with basket illusion that's awesome awesome job Matt that's cool all right I'll run through a couple of grits dry this is 180 here or yeah 180 and then we'll then we'll go ahead and put some oil on it All right. Yeah, one more and then we'll then we'll do oil. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and use the walnut oil switch back over here real quick actually give me a second let me get this camera right in here so you can actually see Two. all right well that's awesome Kristen had a good show that's nice very nice that's always good All right, and this is is uh, it's doctor's walnut oil. That's what I'm using here, and it's just it's a nice finish. It dries, and there's no no more dust. And so I just put it on each grid of sandpaper. Go ahead and wipe it off like that, and then move on to the to the next one. So this is 400 here. And I have the lathe speed down, oh, probably 100 or so. Hey Ward, how you doing? All right, we'll get one more. We'll finish it off with 600. There we go. And then we can flip this around. And after we get the tenon on the body of it, we can finish off the lid. All 
There we go. All right. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get to any of that after we, we take it out of the chuck here. So we want to sand and finish the inside of it just like that before you move on. All right. I'm going to set that aside for a second. We'll grab the other side. Oh, nice. Got a new bandsaw, Harvey. That's awesome. Yeah, I love, love mine. It works fantastic. All right, I'm going to switch Cameron back over here real quick, and I'm going to clean up that little nub right there and then bring the tailstock back up just for a min minute. All right. I'm going to get that, that little nub off there so the live center has a good spot to sit. we're pretty far away from the headstock so there'll be a bunch of vibration you know way out here as far as making the tendon and everything so if you can bring the tailstock back up it really helps hey mark how's it going buddy hey brian all right No, oh, awesome, awesome more. That very cool. Did you do a show? All right. So I'm gonna use the calipers here. We're gonna bring down that tenon right here. So what I did is measure the inside of the the lid, just like so, and then pulled them out and gave it about a half a turn. To open them up a little bit more. That way, when I'm doing this. If I get a little carried away, it doesn't, it's not too, too small. So I always give it about a half a turn. All right. All right. We're going to make that tenon. Oh, vendor at the crapper. That's awesome. Very cool. All right. So that is really close. And we'll refine that in just a second after we after we pull away the tail stock. All right. So I'm going to clean up this. Get that all cleaned up and start shaping the outside of it. Nice, Brian. Yeah, we, uh, we have a puppy, so that it's a lot of work. <laughs> All right. Happy I'm not taking a nap right now. I well, who's to say I didn't just wake up? She's a lot of work. All right.
That's a, that's awesome. Took a pendant to the club meeting. Very cool. All right, we're gonna make this one kind of look like a little vase. I did a uh, little birdhouse a couple weeks ago, or last week, and kind of looked like a vase a little bit. Wonder where you get the dum dums. Every order. <laughs> well, we'll throw in some extra ones. Well, they. We'll throw in throw in one for her next time. <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, well, they used to sell them at a couple of stores, and now it's just one. We have it's uh, what is it? Walgreens. We have to go to Walgreens to get dum dums. Hey Keith, welcome back. Thank you very much. All right. So there. Oh. Did you see that? It jumped back. All right. Not gonna bring down that that down too much. We uh, we uh, need to hollow out, hollow it out, so we'll leave it leave that right down there a little bit thick. All right. Now I'm gonna pull the tailstock away, and we'll start working on the making sizing that tenon and getting that all right. Make a dog bowl, Keith. Rob, Keith, you're going to get me in trouble because Robin wants me to make some sort of wobble dog feeder. And I, it's like a weeble wobble with a hole in it. And Robin said they bat at it and food falls out. But what Robin's not telling you is our dog would eat the bowl too. She would just eat her way through the side of it. So we keep getting dog toys and it says, you know, for heavy chewers. And five minutes later, it's in pieces all over the floor. So, <coughs> yeah, we have to wait a, another year or two before she stops trying to eat, eat everything in the house. All right, just going to take my time, keep sneaking up on it a little bit. That's really, really close. So when you make your, your blank, if you, you make sure that when you cut it, you the ends are square you when you make your ten and you won't have to take off too much material so you still have that center point in them so which is really handy for stuff like this it's center and it back up on the lathe you can bring in the tailstock back up and put it right in that hole right there and hold it on there and it will all be true all right so we're going to bring the tailstock up, put that on there, just like so, tighten it up, and then we'll be able to turn that on the base before we hollow it out.
And you just keep moving your tail or your tool rest. I keep calling this my tail stock. The tool rest up as you as you go in, so you keep it keep it close. All right, Robin said she think, oh, she can hear me. All right, I just wasn't talking. I thought maybe we lost it. Oh, yeah, you can't, the noise canceling on the microphone is a little too good. Because it, it seems, um, the lathe is actually spinning, and it it just it the, you can hear me talking, but you can't hear the lathe lathe sounds. All right, I switched over to a smaller spindle gouge to get right in here, and we'll bring all this down. Yes, yeah, we could put some put some rings in it. I kind of wanted to just do a, a regular one. When I first started turning, I, that's what I, I and well, even now, I love turning lidded boxes. I always have. So I like to turn them, you know, like just with the 10 and 2. But yeah, I used to make and sell boxes for years I always I don't know I just love turning little boxes hey Lacey how you doing that's awesome very cool Hexagon platter with purple heart and ash. That that sounds awesome. All right, got that little teeny nub there. We'll go ahead and just cut that off with the little saw. Robin said there was an, an ad on the video. <laughs> that was weird. Why would there be an ad there? There we go. All right. Well, it's, it's a little bit loose now. All right. Let's fix that. Give me a second. We need some... Painter's tape. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. We need that to stick on there for a second. So that we can f sand it. So this is just painter's tape. If it is a little bit loose, just wrap this around. I'm going to just start sing, singing. I mean, I can't sing. I'm just going to start humming. Okay. Just like so. And I might have to cut that off. Uh, there we go. 
Oh, Mike, they... Oh, they started running ads in the middle of the lives. Well, it's been a while since we did a live. We're we're so far behind the times. So, it, yeah, yeah, you walk away for a minute and everything changes. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm going to turn the laser speed back down to about 300. And we'll go ahead and sand this. And then we'll switch over to the oil here in just a second. So I always run through a couple of grits dry in case there's tool marks or, you know, some or torn grain or something. And then I switch over to the oil as soon as I can. Ray, uh, Mike, Robin just said it wasn't on Jake and Jamie's show this morning. I watched the whole thing. I didn't see any ads. I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe I missed something, but I don't remember seeing any ads on it. Oh. Well, that's weird. Huh. Oh, hey, Josh. Yeah, that was a long time ago. It was my younger days. That was when... Where do you get the walnut oil? We, we sell it on the Niles website. Niles Bottle Stoppers. There's a link in the description. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's great stuff and it it really I'll switch the camera here in just a second and you can see see what it does. Oh, yes, we do have YouTube Premium. That's why Robin doesn't. That's why we could only afford to have one of us be a premium member. <laughs> That's why we never see ads. We're always just logged into mine. Yeah, normally, except for right now. All right. Uh, I'm going to do one more, one more grid here, and then we'll, then we'll get some oil on it. to do it. anything in anybody else working on got got going on the lathe right now we got the aw show coming up here next month we're looking forward to that some oil on there and then so we'll start with that hey Jamie how you doing all right so I forgot to ask so when you when the ad comes on it just like stops the turning I mean it just like starts playing an ad Oh, yeah, sorry, Robin. <laughs> I was talking to Robin. Does it does so the, like the video just stops and it starts playing an ad? Weird. Weird. All right. Oh, 
nice, nice segmenting. I never really got into that much. I little bit, little bit of it. Didn't have the. I made one of those wedgie sleds, which it worked out fantastic. But I never really got into segmenting. That's cool. It's awesome though. All right. Yeah, the walnut really brings out all the color and, and everything in the wood. And it's getting rid of all that sanding dust for you, which is fantastic. <laughs> hey, Greg. Yeah, I hear you, man. I'm right there with you. Yeah, programming and yeah. Yeah, it's a whole nother hobby to get into. We have a CNC machine, but we use it like once a year and I have to go back to school to learn how to put all the pictures in and they have to be a certain file type and it's a mess. All right, and that's 600 right there. There we go. Yeah, yeah, it really just brings out all the grain and color and everything. I, I love the oil. All right. Now let's get the tape off of here. And then we'll go ahead and hollow this out. All right, and I'm going to, oh, we'll just leave it on that camera right there. Yeah, the laser stuff, laser stuff is really cool as far as like doing customizing stuff. Um, it's, it's amazing, but you need to use it all the time. I, you know, I know a lot of people that do it and it's, it's, uh, it just looks awesome. Like here's it, like the tool right there. Look at that. It's all laser engraved right on there. So it, it looks awesome. What are we doing for a living? Working. Working for a living. Well, we do this and we have Niles bottle stoppers. And between those two things, we stay we stay busy. Eight, eight days a week. We do demos. We do club demos. Shows. All right. And this is the number one hauler and the lay speed right back up to 2,500 RPMs. Life is easier with a scroll saw. Is that Jamie? Totally disagree. I, I would rather mess with the laser engraver than the scroll saw. They're dangerous. Hey Rick, how's it going? Mark's got a demo for EasyWood. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, we did one. What did we did one this fall? I think. Up at the woodcraft, yeah.
Mike, can you do? Can you make? Can you do that for me? Because I would love to make some stickers out of it for Jamie. <laughs> uh, we're at 2,500 RPMs. Yeah, so it it's something small like this. It, I crank the speed up on it. Um, it's it's a little piece of wood. Um, you know, when I get into you know a big bowl or a sink or something like that, then I obviously turn the lay speed down. But anything small like this, you know, whether it's little lidded box or or bottle stopper or, or bottle opener handle or anything, I usually crank it up, you know, 2,500, 3,000 RPMs. It just cuts nice. It's, it's, there's not very little danger, you know, and, you know, it's a small, even though it's a small piece of wood, if there was like a big crack or something down, down the side of it, I probably wouldn't crank it up to that much, but this is a good, good solid piece of wood. It's not gonna, you know, not go anywhere. All right, let me tip the tailstock out of the way. We got some room to work. I should try and turn a scroll saw on the lathe. Where's the clock? It's going to go inside. You're not going to be able to see it, but it's in there. What tool am I using? I'm using the Easywood number one hauler. It's that little cutter. So here is like the regular one. And this is the this is the hauler I'm using. That's the regular size. So it's probably, I don't know, close to half the size. And it works fantastic. Yeah, you can because the cutter is so small, it's not taken off a ton of material and you can get out over the tool rest a lot further than you can with that big cutter. You can get over it, uh, I don't know, about five inches or so because and it, it's not going to catch and grab on you. It's not cutting off that much material. Yeah, what, we have another demo. We have a demo at the beach coming up, coming up soon. We're going to be down there for the weekend doing a demo on uh, embellishment stuff. Different ways to embellish your turning. Let's take a look at it and see. Still got a ways to go, still pretty thick. And then we are, I just use the tool as the depth gauge. Just put my thumb right there. We still have about uh, three quarters of an inch to go.
Oh yeah, Robin just mentioned that we have uh, we're gonna have Easywood tools in the booth to to sell at the Oregon show. So please, if you're gonna be here, please stop by and say hi. We got uh, we'll be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's at the towards the end of next month. And Mike, I'll, I'll see if they're going to send some chucks. I'm, I'm not sure. Mike's going to be over at the Easy Inlay booth. Awesome. Yeah, Scott and Nancy are going to come spend the night night before the show with us. Hang out for a little bit, and we're all headed over there. Take a couple more passes, right? Need a few more on the sides here too. And so you can use calipers, you know, to, to measure the, the wall thickness too. When it's something small like this, I, I just normally use my fingers, you know, just you can you can feel it, but yeah, if you or doing a deep base or something like that. They make a lot of different different calipers to get in there and check the wall thickness. Or even like the hollowing systems have lasers on them. To check the wall thickness as you're going, which is really nice. Mike and his wife are going to be down. That's awesome. Very nice. Well, that'll be fun. All right. But yeah, so I'm, oh, I don't know, three inches, maybe a little bit more out past the tool rest. And you can see... Um, you know, the tool's not like trying to, you know, rip itself out, out of my hand or anything. So it's it's really nice. That small cutter works fantastic. My fingers are um, inches. Like, I don't know what that, is that imperial? Okay, that's imperial. Yes. They're not, not goofy. You, you can't just make stuff up and... And, uh, you know, it's 32 centimeters. What is a centimeter, really? I mean, does anybody really know what a centimeter is? How many inches is that? This is real life. All right. So, go ahead and sand the inside of this. Don't touch that tenon. You don't want to grew up that but sand everything else so and the same thing with this I sand the inside outside um, all of it as I'm going and then start working with the oil again yes Brad it, it does it really the number one hauler does it does a great job all the way around. You 
if if everybody doesn't know by now, Jamie's from England, and they they just kind of make stuff up. So. Brad, I can't hear you. I can't hear your 2.5 whatever. Brad, how old's Brad? Throw us an age out there, Brad. Because well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little history lesson. Brad right back yet? Nothing. Right? Brad's 46. So he, see, you're, you're too young to, to remember what happened, Brad. So I'm going to be 56 tomorrow and Monday oh Monday 56 Monday and so they came into the schools when I was a little when I was just a young whippersnapper and they tried to <laughs> try to teach metric in there it lasts about two weeks and they gave up don't mess with what works <laughs> hey Glenn how you doing Glenn's up in Canada so they probably use metric so He's not going to be on our side. All right. So I got that all sanded up. We're going to switch over to the oil. I'm just going to get a little bit of the dust off. All right. Yeah, they, uh, I don't think they ever came back to it. They just gave up after that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I can't remember. We were in like third grade or something when they tried to do it. Or it was first grade, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, this isn't working. <laughs> Back in the day. Back in the day, Brad. I love that one. That's a good one. Back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were trying to teach us metric and make us walk to school in the snow uphill both ways. It wasn't going to work. All right. It's all intense. I know. I actually know. And my boy Hayden, he he's like, he's into like robotics and stuff. And he goes, it's just so much easier. And he thinks it's funny that we still use inches. Six hundred right here. <laughs> Brad. All right. There we go. Now we'll get the flip it around and get the foot off. You do metric for the segmented. So, I don't know. I don't do a lot of segmenting. It, isn't it just like, do you have to do inches? Isn't it just a, Jamie, don't try and butter up my boy.
Thank you, brother. You just want him on your side when you guys pick on me about something. Thank you. Keith. All right. Thank you, Keith. All right. There we go. So we still have that little point on the bottom there so that we can bring the tailstock right back up and center it all up. So we're just going to go ahead and switch the jaws here real quick and grab a hold of it and bring the tailstock up and get rid of the foot. Yeah, I've, uh, I just, I love turning lid in boxes. I always have. It's kind of, after I first got started in turning and figure out how the tools cut and everything, that's what I started turning. And I've just been doing it ever since. All right. So we are going to get it close. And then I'm going to back it off just a little bit. And then I'm going to wrap some tape around. They were allies from, they are, just just because you want to pick on the old guy. All right, so I put that tape on there to just kind of protect it a little bit. Then we'll get it back up there and then open the jaws up. It'll probably bust the tape, you know, in, in one of the open spots, but it'll still be on on the actual jaw. go we'll get the tail stock back up here oh give me a second and I'm gonna bring the point of that out just a bit because the the point on the so I run this one back all the way to where it's just barely sticking out for almost everything. But because the the spur center on the on the front is a little bit sticking out further, because I don't have to worry about that sign, it makes a little bit bigger hole. So I, <laughs> it switched to metric in 82 and it still don't get it, right? Why why they gotta mess with stuff? Yeah, the chuck is is fantastic. It uh yeah, and they're not numbered, it takes about ten seconds to change the jaws. It's unless you're Jamie and then it takes about 35 minutes. All right. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and switch cameras for you. And then we're going to take this, this foot off right here. And we'll cup out the bottom just a little bit. Christian said no one can afford that chuck. Yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, you could buy three chucks for more money, and that would probably work, too. Yeah. Yeah, I had three chucks before, and they cost more than this one. So it just depends on what you want to do. Because they are, they're a pain to change the jaws in it, so that's why everybody loves them. And a lot of people have them. Yeah, I had three chucks before I got this one. And because changing the jaws in them was such a pain and they were all missing missing Allen screws. And I had this chuck for, I don't know, about six months and I just got rid of the other three. I sold them. And this is the only one I've had for five or six years. Maybe longer. 
It's uh, easy wood. Yeah. All right. Now I'll switch to the smaller spindle gouge so we can get right in there. And we'll cup this out just a little bit. It sits nice and flat. Yeah, Byron, right? I know, I was, I uh, probably had one screw in each jaw because I had lost the other screws over the years. birthday Saturday? Oh, Glenn. Your wife's birthday is today or next Saturday? Uh, it depends. I, I do go back and forth. So, as far as which one I prefer better. It, it really, I don't know. It, it depends on the job too, as far as the spindle gouge or the detailer. Um, a lot of times I just grab the little detailer. A lot of times I will actually use this to get it close and then grab the detailer. Because this one takes off a lot more material than the detailer. And so when I get right down to that little nub, nub right there, a lot of times I'll just grab the, the fine detailer, this guy right there nope oh, wrong one that one right there and bring down that last little nub because it's easier to get in there but the spindle gouge takes off a lot of material quick and does a nice job uh, yes today is Saturday it your wife's birthday is today, Glenn. You better get... Today's Saturday, Glenn. Is, is it Saturday in Canada? Right, I'm going to tighten this up a little teeny bit more. Where, where are you at in Canada? He, oh, Glenn's in Quebec. Right, right, right. Glenn, we just had some of your your uh, uh, country mates here. Jamie and his family came down from Alberta. And they were actually having some work done on a car and stopped by and spent a couple hours with us. It was, it was really nice. Next Saturday. All right, all right. Well, tell her happy birthday, April girl. Nice. All right, and this is the uh, number one hauler again. All right. And we can switch back over there. <laughs> live in the future <laughs> yeah. the micro detailer on pendants yes it works fantastic uh yeah it cuts yeah i really uh i'm sorry was that byron yeah 
yeah, I like I like doing the the fine detailer better than the bigger one, especially for pendants and small stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Turn the lathe speed down. So what we're going to do here is this is this little spot right there is the only thing that, that we didn't sand. We just sand, we already sanded all this, but because you kind of kind of blend it together, we're going to slowly work our way back up the piece, just kind of overlapping with the sandpaper each time. And I usually like have the dust collector on, you know, when I'm doing this part of it. Yeah, when uh, 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 Glenn, yeah, Jamie and his his uh, family came down. I was, we were talking, and they were having some some work done. Uh, they had a they have a Toyota truck, and they were having the motor changed. And they came all they came down here to Oregon to do it. And he said it's so hard to find you know like parts up there, because there's just not that many you know c cars on the road. And, then he, he told me, he goes, there's more people in California than there are in Canada. And I just did not realize that. So there's just a lot less parts and stuff like that. Yeah, there's a place about an hour and a half from us. And they sw do Toyota work and swap engines and stuff. And they, they came all the way down for it. All right. All right. They are smooth. My hands, the walnut oil is like, uh, it's like palm olive. Remember palm olive? Do they still have palm olive? That was back when they were trying to teach us metric palm olive. So yeah, each time you uh, you go up, just go up a little bit further, you know, and that way the you won't see the the line, the sanding line. Just kind of work your way up and then finish off at the top. Yeah, Robin Glenn Robin said sounds lovely. <laughs> Palm olive was before your time? What? They were trying to tell you you should do the dishes because it makes your hands soft. Just stay in the kitchen and do the dishes and you're, you'll have soft hands. Right? Yeah.
All right, I have one more grit because I screwed up. All right, 600. go uh, are you the only one that sees an apple somebody said no it looks just like an apple let's get the lid on it and get rid of that it, it does it looks just like an apple I see it too do, 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 do. all right Go, we'll get the green lined up on it. It goes just like that. There we go. Now it doesn't look so much. It looks like an apple with a lid on it. But yeah, it's got got some great color in it across there. Yeah. There we go. All right. Give me a second here. I have to get this walnut oil off my hands. I think the palm olive came off easier than the walnut oil. Urn. Apple with a hat, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's um, I maybe three inches tall, two or so in diameter. Yeah, and it is out of myrtle wood. A hobbit had that, right? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I've always loved turning lidded boxes. I've turned hundreds and hundreds of lidded boxes. I used to sell them at galleries, and I just, I don't know, I just, fascinated with lidded boxes and they're they're really a great project especially if you're getting into turning because it's there's just about everything in there there's spindle turning there's practice on fitting you know tenons and recesses and there's hollowing along with it so it's you know and design and shape and and all of that so it's a it's a great project to just play around with make a bunch of lidded boxes yeah it is a lot of fun. Yeah, and you get, you know, even with that, you can, there's so many different shaped and shapes you can do. So it's really cool. It's a, they're a lot of fun. All right. Does anybody have any questions? So we can, about anything? Except metric or scroll saws. Those are two off limits. Oh, and sterling quid or whatever it is, the money. I don't know anything about that either. Uh, most of them have the wood in the spindle orientation. I'm not sure what that means. Most of them you mean where the grain lines back up I'm not sure do most of them um, I wouldn't say that I mean if that's what you mean I'm not sure clarify in the chat do you do you mean do most lidded boxes have the lane grain line back up What song am I? I'm gonna sing "Happy Birthday," just just to myself. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> um, all right, I'm not sure what that question was about the... Oh, pardon me? Yeah, you don't want to do, don't want to do cross grain. Like, like this is the end grain, end grain. So you want it on the lathe like that. End grain, end grain, like that. If you turn it that way, it's really hard to get a clean cut on it. And what happens is the end grain on the sides of it, they're going to be hard to get get smooth and true and it just not get a clean cut with it. And then you're going to have sanding problems and everything else. So you're going to have bad spot here and a bad spot there. So turn it in grain, in grain, running down the lathe. What is the logo on my t-shirt? Oh, uh, uh, I believe it's Brad, friend of ours. See, it's his t-shirt. Yeah, I, it's Brad, right? I think it's Brad. Ask Jamie. Jamie, is Jamie still out there? He knows. It's uh, another wood uh, woodworker, maker, does stuff. Um, why do I want to say Brad? Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, his T-shirt. Got everybody's. Everybody's stuff up here. Do you see your sticker up on the wall somewhere? I can't remember. Why do I want to say it's Brad? I don't think it's Brad either. I can't remember what his name is. It's been a long time ago. Stay, stay on the bottom, right on the top green. What does that mean? Tony, have a good one. Good night. Sleep tight. All right. All right, everyone. I'm going to take off. Um, hope you have a good weekend. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below in the uh, comment. We will get to them and answer whatever we can. All right. Have a good weekend. Take care.